Me që jemi sërish se bashku në këtë pjesë të emisionit Madame, ju tregova që me neve është një musafir shumë special, i cili ka ardhë shumë largë nga Amerika. Në fakt, kemi të bëjmë me një murg edhe filozof, i cili është i shkulluar për fotografi, por ka shumë vite që merët me spiritualizm, me neve është Svami Tirnta. Svami Tirnta. Svami Tirnta. Svami Tirta. Pra, Svami ka artë nga Amerika e Largët. Edhe është, nuk është për herë të parë në Kosovë. No, this is not my first visit to Kosovë. I've been here before and I have been visiting here once a year for the past, I think, six or maybe even seven years. Ok, a ka dalim në në mes vizitës partë që ujës këtu në Kosovë edhe tash që përvini që përthoni disa herë që jeni këtu. Ja, there's way many more buildings now. Well, that's the most obvious thing. A lot of new buildings. Ok. Filimir, du më ju falim dhiru që keni pranu me qenë musafir në këtë emision edhe pytja eme për juve para do tjetë që A jemi të gjithë nga njerëzit që një shpirtërore, ose që një të cilët bajmë shpirt në vete, mirë po vetëm disa për njëve jemi spiritual. Well, thank you for having me. It's my great pleasure and honor to you. I'm a monk, and so I have, obviously have dedicated to a specific tradition, but Even though I have dedicated to a specific tradition, I don't think that the knowledge that I am um, that I'm dealing with, the knowledge that I'm studying, is uh, is a sectarian knowledge. In other words, I believe that this is a universal knowledge, and I think that uh, within this universal knowledge, uh, by this universal knowledge, we come to see the universality of all beings. So, for example, uh, uh, every being, from my point of view, is primarily a spiritual being, not a physical being. For example, um, we all have physical bodies, like a hand. Hand is, this hand is my hand, uh, but I am not the hand. There's a difference between me, the owner, and the hand, the owned. I own the hand. Same thing with the eye. I say my eye or my head, or even we can go more subtle, my mind. There's obvious difference between me and the mind. I observe the mind. And so then the question is, who's the observer? That's a very old question who's the observer, and at least within my own tradition, uh, the answer that's given or the claim that's being made is that we are all primarily spiritual beings by our own very nature. And so, for example, all of our needs, not all of our needs, but uh, most of our primary needs are actually metaphysical. They're not physical needs like need to love. Uh, need for beauty, sense of beauty, sense of um, justice, need for justice, for example. Um, uh, these are not physical, these are metaphysical things. These are values, for example. Values are not uh, a physical thing. Values are metaphysical thing. So there's so much metaphysical about us, <laughs> every single one of us. Um, it is difficult to conclude that we're merely a physical being. Now, why some people are not spiritual? Well, what I would say that every person is spiritual, but some people cultivate the, some people cultivate the knowledge, some don't. Some have interests, some don't. But it's just like psychology. Everyone has psychology. Some people study their own psychology. They think about their own thoughts and feelings and you know, they try to be in touch with themselves and try to make informed decisions and they try not to be victims of their own urges and so on. So such people study their own psychology and there are people who are just, um, how should I put it, reactionary. They just react. They don't even think about their feelings and thoughts and where they're coming from, what's their 
nature and so on. Am I a good person if I behave like this, that, the other thing? Uh, some people just merely react. Of course, that's, that's an extreme. So, we all have psychology, but some people study their own psychology and the psychology of others. So, same, uh, in the same manner, I'd say that we're all primarily spiritual beings in the very essence of who we are, all of us. But some people are showing interest in it and they go deep into it investigating that and some not. <laughs> okay, thank you. Pytja jeme e arshme është për juve se spiritualiteti në fakt a mundet me umsu, a msuhet, apo a i ndjehet? Well, I'd say that uh, you have now identified two different ways of learning. And uh, uh, so you can feel it or you can study it. But actually, why not both? For, you know, we as human beings, we have different faculties, different tools, God-given, nature-given, whichever way we want to put it, that we use to learn about everything. And we learn also through feelings, but we also learn rationally uh, through thought and philosophy and so on. So when it comes to uh, spiritual quest, or for that matter, any quest, um, we use all of the faculties. There's no need to eliminate certain faculties and say <coughs> a particular faculty is, uh, is insufficient. No, we have all of the faculties and might as well use them. Okay. Um, me qenë se ju të toni në për botë dhe, dhe um, jepni ligjerata në për gjithë botën në barë, atër um, um, dhe doja me ju pytë cilat janë ata dalime që janë mes njerëzve, për shumëll në kontinentet e ndryshme, edhe qka është ajo për bashkë të për të gjithë njerëzimin? Yes, I do travel quite a bit. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I've been to Africa, I've been to Siberia, I've traveled all over Europe, States, uh, never been to Australia. Uh, so I travel quite a bit. And uh, I mean, one thing that's really striking is to see how people are very, very, very similar in, uh, in some essential way. And uh, in some peripheral ways, people are different. Like people may differ culturally a little bit like that. People may physically differ a bit. Like in India, for example, people have a different uh, skin color or in Africa than, uh, than in Kosovo. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's really interesting to see when you travel so much, uh, to see how people have so much in common. Like there's a, a whole lot in common to us. And and we're different, really, only peripherally, which it's an interesting point also made in uh, Bhagavad Gita. I don't know if you've ever read the book. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a book out of India. It's a philosophical work, um, very famous like that. Uh, Come to Jupo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A very influential book over the, over the ages. And uh, in it, there's a, a very interesting claim this claim says that, um, that fundamentally all beings are equal, fundamentally, but peripherally that beings are different. Like for example, you have, a, you have a male, you have female, for example, some people are taller, some are shorter, some are wider, <laughs> some are more narrow, <laughs> there's all kinds of people, physically. And interestingly, physically we're all different. We may even differ, differ culturally, but in a, in a very, in the essential way, in the fundamental way, we're all the same. And, and, it, and because of it, we can, we can deeply connect with people anywhere we go. Very impressive. Edhe unë ashtë të mënaj që jemi në përgjithsi të dalushëm, kurse në tërsi jemi të gjithë të njejtë. In fact, I think that we have a lot of money. I think that we have a lot of money. I think that we have a lot of money. I think that we have a lot of money. I think that we have a lot of money. I think that 
edhe kjo pytja radhës për, për juve është, a ka qenë njërzimi ma herët, ma spiritual, edhe tash e ka hup një periud të kohës lidhjen e vetë me spiritualitetin, ose s'pa ko këtu në treva tona? Ja, yeah, there's, there's a very good number of people that make that claim, that people in general, civilizations in general, used to be more spiritual. Uh, um, and there is good grounds for it. For example, the argument you have just gave, a thought that uh, most, of the, uh, most of the spiritual tradi- traditions have originated sometimes in the past. Uh, um, okay, that's, a, that's an interesting argument. Uh, I have never, I have to be very honest, I have never done a serious study to see what's the difference between people now and then. I am under the impression or different impressions and some of these impressions may suggest me that some bygone, in some bygone times people were more spiritual. But um, I would not want to be so imprecise, uh, I'll let that be. Um, uh, um, I can certainly say something about present times, and that is that we live in a very fast-paced times, uh, where things are enveloping really, really fast, and uh, and people have um, people have uh, great many opportunities to. Um, to spend their time, to, to, to spend their attention, to give their attention to great so many things, like so many things. Um, and we could say that perhaps because of it, modern people might be quite distracted. Um, that is a big modern problem, like for example, just the electronic devices, we use them, we, I, I use electronic devices to communicate and so on, but they also have the ability to really, really pull us into an unimportant world that we waste our time and energy on things that are not even trivial, but way worse than that, maybe even, maybe even detrimental to, uh, to our well-being. Um, and in this particular case, our spiritual well-being. So, um, that's something that did not exist in bygone times. Uh, This amount of distraction that exists in the modern times did not exist. But what's interesting in modern times that people, uh, in general, at least in the the, um, economically developed world, people are living in really great comfort. And at least my experiences from traveling around, that people who um, were not bothered by uh, uh, by the lack of basic necessities for life, such as food, shelter, health, and so on, that uh, 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 that very often they exhibit uh, intellectual and spiritual thirst, interest. And, um, and these kind of people are very often my customers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think of them as customers, I'm just being funny, but uh, um, these are the people that I very often connect with, and these are the kind of people that very often co- come to my lectures. Me than që edhe une poshtë mendoj që kontakti i kontakti në të cilin e kemi pas ma heret me me universin edhe me, me spiritualitetin ose me atë tonën të pa dukshmen me metafizikën, është zhduk për një periud, por të ashtë por i këthet me, me furit të madhe. Gjithësësi përtje e me radhës për juve është, a duhet njëriu gjithësësi me kalu në përdhimbje, që me mujt me kuptu shpirtërore më brenda vetës, ose me, me, a, me e kuptu spiritualitetin brenda vetës. It is not necessary to experience pain or painful situations um, in order to go deep into uh, spiritual studies and spiritual experiences. And it's not necessary. But very often, very often, uh, for a whole lot of people, pain is a crossroad. Uh, 
because um, we have a, when everything feels right, we just keep going straight. But then when we encounter pain, when we feel pain, that's the, that's the moment when we have a tendency to ask ourselves, am I doing something wrong? Or sh could I be spending my time and energy in a better way? And that's when people make turns. So, um, so pain uh, could be a good spiritual catalyst, pain. But it doesn't have to. I know a lot of people who have experienced pain and just became very depressed. Uh, that's an un unfortunate situation. But that's an important thing about uh, transcendence. Uh, very often spirituality is, um, is described as something which is transcendental. Uh, in other words, it's independent of the physical world. Um, it's, it's not divorced from it, but it is independent. It, it, it's, it's not divorced, they're, they're both there, but it doesn't depend on it. And so we see that sometimes pain and pleasure can have, uh, can have, can take one in one direction or the other. You just never know. Depends. Shum regull dhe më dhanë e kuptova që është e panvarër, por kjo në ambjent është të një pytje tjetër, e cila do të kisha dashtu në me e pytë juve, nëse është e panvarër në tëranë, Atëherën, a egziston nga bimi në jetën e një reut, apo gjithka është një farmyre fati? Well, everything is a destiny in the sense that it happened. But I would not say that everything is predestined in the sense that we have no choice. Um, I think we do have a choice and I, uh, um, I believe that we have a responsibility to always try to do better things, um, to lead a better life, to investigate what's the best life, and to share that with others. I think we have that responsibility. Now, I would not want to say that we have complete freedom, because uh, we're always under influence of so many things. Like, for example, so many people are traumatized by pain, and God knows we all have experienced pain and we all had our fair share of trauma in our lives. And uh, just by being traumatized by an event, uh, our freedom has been a little bit curtailed as we're traumatized by the thing and we want to bypass it. And we even have a tendency to um, um, project trauma onto things which do not cause trauma. Um, so that's another curtailing of our freedom. Then we have urges, we have attachments, and all of these sort of curtail our freedom. Now that's one of the reasons why someone would do yoga. And when I say yoga, I don't mean just the yoga exercises, but uh, yoga is a huge, deep field of uh, all kinds of things. Lifestyle. Uh, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Uh, but serious yoga begins with, um, uh, with learning to rise above the duality, duality of pain and pleasure, because pain and pleasure can have this deluding effect that make you not uh, choose the right choices, pick the right choices because of our attachments or, or our aversions like that. So it is very important for a person to be sober, to be able to um, to make uh, good quality decisions like that. So that'd be my answer in regards to freedom and destiny. <laughs> freedom of choice and freedom. destiny. Freedom. Um, um, a ka, a ka ndiku pandemia COVID-19 në, në zgjimin, në njerëzimit, në përgjithsvi, edhe pse? I have to say that I haven't seen, uh, again, I haven't done any comprehensive studies, so I cannot really say with any certainty, but in my travels, in my lectures, with all of the people that I meet every day from different places, I really have not noticed uh, much of a difference, I have to say. Uh, Pre-COVID or post-COVID, situation. 
That's my experience. Maybe I, maybe I haven't hung out with, uh, with the right people, but just speaking from my experience. Once I remember, I was, uh, for many years, I, um, I was organizing retreats for um, people who wanted to be monks. Just for some time, people come and experience the monastic, monastic life where they rise early in the morning, take a bath, meditate, uh, do all kinds of things throughout the day. We have you know, the whole day structure for them. And then, you know, some people would come for a weekend, some would come for a week, some would come for three months, some would come for a whole year. <laughs> and uh, um, I forget what the year was, I think 2006 or seven or eight, when the uh, housing market collapsed in, in America. And then uh, the economic um, uh, hardships uh, spread nearly all over the planet. And uh, at that point, when I was in the States, uh, that situation made a whole lot of people question the choices they made in life up until then. And, uh, and we had so many people who wanted to be, uh, to experience the monastic life, we couldn't, we had no space for them. It was insane. It was a lot of people seeking. I haven't, I didn't have that experience with COVID, post-COVID or during COVID. <laughs> Ok, pyetja jeme e radhës uh, për juve, ashtë, më qenë se pëthoni që Covid nuk ka ndryshu, nuk e shifni që ka bëhën e dalim të madhë, atëherë, uh, unë e kam, e kam dëgju që 2018 një e keni majtë një ligjerat për Google, lidhur me teknologjin edhe lidhur me atës e sindikon teknologjia në jetë në tona, pyetja jeme e radhës është andikon në fakt teknologjia, në andikmon në ngritjen tonë spirituale, apo ajo na Nothing gone, in fact. Okay, I'll quickly give the, repeat the seminar right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> just later. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, I was uh, I was invited by uh, uh, by a Google worker uh, employee to give a lecture to the Google employees on the topic of relationship of humans with technology. It, it's a very interesting topic, really, and uh, what does technology do to us? Um, anyhow, we explored the issue in that, in that presentation, and one thing became clear, the technology in itself, like most of the things, is neither beneficial nor not beneficial, but uh, it, it really, in the, in the most important way, depends uh, on the reasons for which we use it and how we use it. Uh, now, Having said that, I would say that most of the technological advancement that, uh, 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 that we as humans are, uh, are making nowadays uh, is... I have to be careful what I say because I don't want to offend anyone, but I don't think that, that the urge for it is coming from a healthy place. I think it's for the most part coming from people who are very restless. Because uh, if you're truly satisfied, if you're self-satisfied, then you don't need a whole lot externally. You can live a simple life. Uh, you know, the most important things anyways never were um, physical comfort. And how much physical comfort do we need? Um, once we have, uh, there's even studies that show this, that once people have uh, uh, covered their basic physical needs, such as eating, sleeping, and they can pay their bills, and uh, you know, just basic needs, uh, all of the money they make above that um, has, it contributes in no way to their well-being, like no way, unless they use it for, uh, for good things. So, why technology? It's just constantly developing technology. I'm not against it. I am not against it, God knows. <laughs> but uh, what I'm personally, what I'm concerned with is that uh, the reasons why, because if all of this is coming from mere restlessness, because we're not capable of being happy with ourselves, then uh, I don't think it's a good thing. Um, and then also, 
if you give this kind of technology to restless people, I mean, what happens? They become super restless, uh, super disturbed in their minds. And then there's an additional, I think, uh, very important issue. That is, as the technology advances, um, technology gives fewer people power over great many people. Uh, that's what technology does, because technology in, in, its, in its very essence increases our abilities. Like, for example, our ability to communicate. You have a cell phone, you know, now you have a cell phone, you can really communicate. You know? I, mean, I remember times when you had to write a letter, you know, seal it in an envelope and put it in a mailbox, and then it's like in two weeks is in, the, is, is in America or whatever. Uh, and then you wait for another two weeks for a response <laughs> to come back. So, but nowadays you just, you know, you send videos. Like you, you talk, you have video chat with your mom. And like I'm in Russia somewhere and you know, calling my mother over, over video chat. Um, so technology increases our abilities. Uh, but as our abilities increase, so also increases the ability of the few to control the many. And we know that humans have a tendency to not be very spiritually healthy. Uh, and then when you have this great powerful technology in the hands of people who are spiritually not healthy, it can be very dangerous. And that's uh, one of my great concerns with, uh, with technological development. Uh, there are more, but uh, just a few that come to mind. Një morg, një morg modern, i cili edhe është shkollu për fotografi, në fakt, masi që është bërë morg, um, edhe që kontakti i ti me teknologjinë është shumë okej. Okay. Yeah, I did. Uh, uh, I mean, interesting thing about uh, monks, at least from the, uh, from the tradition of bhakti yoga, is that monks do separate a bit from the society. But only, you know, in, in order to, in, um, in solitude, to go deeper into, um, uh, into our inner world. That's the point. But the point of it is not to separate from the world. The point of it is to participate in the world in a good quality way. That I myself am a good quality person. And that I, as hopefully a good quality person, can offer... Uh, something good to the rest of the world, the people I associate with, my parents, friends, people I meet in lectures, and, and so on, everyone. So uh, I, as a monk, uh, have initially in my monastic life have uh, pulled into seclusion, and I spent in seclusion some number of years, not too many, a few years, and then I slowly started to go out into the world and uh, and uh, share what I thought was really good and really beautiful with the world. And, uh, uh, and then the world, I have to say, embraced me very well and it pulled me further into the world. Um, and so, among other things, I also studied photography <laughs> and, uh, and used photography for various uh, projects, which I thought were really good projects. Um, jemi gati fare në fund të intervistës dhe një, një pytje cila në fakt mu më, më shqetson si, si një njëri cili merëm edhe me astrologi dhe me këta pjesë pak ma spirituale. Um, a me ndoni që është frika në fakt ajo e cila neve na, na lenë mrapa ose na, na ndalon në zhvillimin ton spirituale? I would really have to deeply think about it, whether the fear is is the strongest element there, detracting element. But definitely, fear is a, is a beast, is a formidable beast. Uh, for example, in the Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that a person cannot be a monk <laughs> if, it, if the person is unnecessarily fearful. Uh, so, anyhow, fear is not a fine emotion. Fear is a uh, not a very sophisticated emotion and tends to not bring out of us uh, sophisticated behavior, fine thoughts, fine emotions. As a matter of fact, 
has a tendency to bring out beastly nature of ourselves like that. So fear is a, is a huge thing. For example, every time we, we learn something, we're really moving in the direction of the unknown. And to be on, on the path of learning, you're always facing the fear of the unknown. Like, what is the unknown bringing to me today, <laughs> tomorrow? Um, and so, <clears throat> for this reason, very often people have a tendency to just settle in a box of the things they think they know, and they, they don't budge, they don't move. But these people are not very progressive. Again, if I may quote Bhagavad Gita, another very interesting concept, speaks of different types of knowledge. And there is one very interesting type of knowledge, which is called knowledge in ignorance. I mean, how can knowledge be in ignorance? And that's a knowledge where a person is uh, closed in a box of, of certain incomplete knowledge. And, and the little things that the person knows uh, are not liberating the person, but they're actually keeping the person within the box. So <laughs> Bhagavad Gita calls that knowledge in ignorance. So you know, but a little. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to leave, leave the comfort of that little knowledge you have. E vërtet, shumë, po më përqenë në spjegimi ujë në këtë pyqe, sepse më fakt në një farë mënyre edhe unë e kështu e perceptoj, gjithësësi kemi arsë farë në fund të kësaj interviste, dhe unë ju falendroj që keni qenë pjesë e ju në asot, gjithësësi në a epë një një përësi për fund, që ka do të kështë dash për në thonë? Uh, the end, right? Uh, let this end be a new beginning. beginning yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, I'm often asked that question, uh, whether I have a message. <laughs> and really, um, if I were to boil, the, there's so many things I could uh, use, use this opportunity to say. But if I would have to choose just one thing, I think it's always the same thing, and that is, um, uh, that is brutally honest um, uh, seeking of knowledge and truth. Brutally honest. Takes great amount of courage. Uh, I really don't want to make anyone uncomfortable, let alone offend someone, but in my experience, uh, Maybe even the majority of people live lives of lies. Uh, and not just that they're lying, we tend to lie about ourselves. Like, my value is because of my looks. My value is because of my watch. My value is because of the car I have. Be or my value is because of my social position and so on. We tell a lie, that's not our value. And then we, 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 we fabricate a whole life of lies. And then a true spirituality, it just stays very, very far away. Uh, and the only thing that can bring that illusion down is actually our own genuine interest in being super brutally honest with ourselves. And then go on a search. And then as many traditions say that if you honestly ask, you'll get an honest answer. The world will give it to you. God will give it to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mi, you're ready to go to the blog marketing, and you're ready to go back.